y'all welcome back to the nortex mining youtube channel today we're going to be going over the best miners now none of this is financial advice of course but i can tell you i do have uh experience deploying 11 miners three sense cap four bobcats one freedom fi two Helltex, and one rack minted black spot so the name of the game as far as the miners go every miner performs very similarly when it works so the key here is to optimize uptime and minimize downtime now which hotspots are the best at doing that so I've split it into three different tiers here um, and as the network kind of grows there's some ebbs and flows but by and large I think in my experience and the general consensus, SenseCap M1s and Bobcats are right there at the top, neck and neck. So let's go ahead and, and dive into tier one here. The reason why everybody loves SenseCaps, including myself, is because of their remote management features. They have a remote dashboard, which is very, very valuable when you're trying to minimize downtime and trying to diagnose issues. So um, I'll have all these links in the description below, but basically this remote dashboard is very, very useful, uh, mostly for uh, being able to ping your hotspot to see if it's connected, see if it's healthy, um, to see if your uh, incoming and outgoing uh, connections are okay it and again the documentation here with SenseCab is phenomenal it, it, it explains to you what the NAT types are uh, what you're looking for um, the blockchain height obviously this is huge when you're syncing or when you're not sure what's going on this is very clearly updated for you every five minutes in the remote dashboard you don't have to be right next to your sense cap and Bluetooth pair to it. You don't need to be even on the same Wi-Fi as your sense cap M1. You just need to add it to your remote dashboard. Uh, and again, the documentation with sense cap is phenomenal. I mean, it's got everything, you know, you can see your SD card usage on the remote dashboard. Um, so again, just super suit cannot uh, emphasize enough how awesome the SenseCap M1 dashboard is. Um, secondarily, they do have a local dashboard. Uh, so that looks a little bit more something like this, that when you're on the same network as your SenseCap, you're able to log in to your miner um, and, and do things such as, you know, reset blocks or turbo sync. Now, a couple months ago, this feature was all the rage, and there was some upgrades to the way that uh, snapshots were loaded, uh, so this isn't as big of an importance anymore, but still, I mean, very nice to have. Not all manufacturers can boast uh, that they have a turbo sync available. Um, so SenseCap is definitely one of them, the remote dashboard, the local dashboard, and then the third thing that is just off the charts with SenseCap is their tech support. When you go into the Discord and you go to the troubleshooting uh, channel, you ask for help, they are on it fast. And they are able to help you diagnose things. I mean, e even if it's some of the more simple things or, or there's just a lot of good people in the community and the SenseCap tech support people, uh, are phenomenal. I mean, I had an issue with one of my sense caps. I wasn't sure if it was a, a PoE splitter issue or what was going on, the SD card. Um, and I mean, they followed up with me. Not very many other manufacturers can say that. These guys are on top of it. They will follow up with you. Cannot say enough good things about the sense caps. The only downside to the sense caps is. It has this uh, removable SD card storage. So um, it's got this 64 gig micro SD card. Um, 
these have a limited lifespan. Um, a lot of people have been having troubles with um, the racks and their SD cards. The sense caps, I think, tend to last a little bit longer, but I have had to replace one SD card so far on out of my three sense caps. Um, so that's the only drawback for the sense caps. Um, the other tier one minor has been the Bobcats. Uh, you know, again, phenomenal uptime. Uh, a couple months back, they were having a lot of issues with their OTAs, and their OTAs were knocking people's Bobcats offline for days at a time. The past couple months, they've been really, really doing well. Uh, they do have a high uptime. They do also have a local dashboard. Um, so this is kind of what their local dashboard looks like. You can sign in. Um, as long as you're on the same network as your Bobcat, you you know you can find its IP address when you Bluetooth pair to the Bobcat. Um, and then uh, they did add a fast sync option as well. Uh, so you can see uh, your syncing gap very quickly. And then you're able to fast sync. Um, so again, Bobcat does have the local dashboard option. Now you cannot access this if you're on another network, you're out of state, you're out of town, you cannot get to this uh, readily uh, just with the standard Bobcat functionality. So that would be the negative on the Bobcats is that there's no remote monitoring. And if it goes down, you're not really sure why, you kind of just have to wait uh, for it to come back up. Um, okay, so tier two, uh, we've got the uh, Freedom Fi and the Heltex. Uh, again, I, I did place um, the order for the Heltex on October 1st, and they were able to deliver those uh, within the 30 working days. Um, shipping was a little hefty and they do charge a, a fee for PayPal so um, a little bit more than than the um, you know uh, initial price that I thought I was gonna pay but still uh, you know two hotspots for nine hundred dollars uh, delivered you know was was you know definitely worth it So the Heltex were able to be delivered uh, within the time frame. Um, I know there's been some issues with um, the receiver sensitivity um, and their uh, this 1308 chip um, and the this other FEM chip uh, that caused you know more noise to be let in, and so. Uh, the receiver maybe isn't as great on the Heltex. Uh, initially, again, these are only for uh, orders that happened before December 2021. Um, so the problem's been, since been resolved, but my two units uh, that I purchased from Heltech do have this issue. Um, it hasn't really affected earnings as much as I thought it would. Uh, my top earner is on a 20-foot flagpole in an outdoor enclosure. It's a Helltech. Um, it's a budget antenna. And that one, you know, made about 12.4 HNT last month. So I'm not really seeing the, the drawback of this receiver issue I, I think maybe some of the uh, software fixes have helped it maybe um, but again a, definitely a consideration of mine since I purchased before December 2021 um, so just something to be aware of um, yeah I mean you, you've got a couple DB loss uh, because of this uh, different chip that was used um, Again, I think people were upset. This 1308 says it can only go down to minus 139 on the sensitivity. Um, and the uh, hotspot page on Heltech's website says um, it can go down to like 142 or something. Here in the specs, yeah, it's got it down here, which is... Uh, 
incorrectly labeled, to put it nicely. Um, so there's that. Uh, you know, the other the other devices. I mean, kind of the same type of sensitivity down to 139 for the racks, uh, for the sense caps. Same thing. So um, again, a little bit of a mislabel there. I, it looks like they've corrected the problem. So um, that's why they're in the tier two. Um, again, t uh, tech support not. Um, as great uh, just because there's a lot fewer of these devices that I don't think they really have the same amount of staff that uh, SenseCap does. Uh, the other tier two I've got is a FreedomFi. Uh, now this thing is expensive. I mean, this is a thousand dollar unit, um, but it does have the ability to expand and I'll be putting the CBRS antenna um, on this guy um, to be able to mine 5G rewards soon, uh, you know, within the next f six months, I suppose. Um, but this is a, a much more expensive unit. It is, I feel like, future proof. Um, it's got ports to expand for the small cell or for Wi Fi access points. So, higher price point, uh, expandability. Uh, there is no Wi-Fi connectivity for this unit. You have to plug it in via Ethernet. So I think that's a positive and a negative. The positive of that is obviously you'll get good uptime. You'll have, if you have a decent connection, you'll have everything always connected. There, there's not going to be any Wi-Fi dropping issues. Um, it does have a local dashboard, uh, but it's kind of bare bones, and it just kind of shows you uh, the basics of what you need here. Um, oh, one other point, the Helltech also does have a local dashboard. Um, there is no fast sync option uh, with the Helltechs. Uh, you can load a more up-to-date snapshot, but again, you're kind of at the mercy of other people in the Discord that are like, hey, let me help you out with a newer snapshot. Um, yeah, so no fast sync option on the Helltech. No remote monitoring on the Helltech. Uh, no remote monitoring on the Freedom Fi either. Um, so again, these are some of the things that are dropping down the tiers. And then finally, uh, for the tier three, um, we've got the uh, the rack version two. Um, which has been rebranded here. Um, these minted uh, gold spots and black spots. It's the same hardware. Um, but these are really tier three just because of all the issues that people have been having with the SD cards. And these things have kind of dropped, um, dropped sync and uh, have just been offline for days at a time. Um, really... And again, when you're talking about best miners, you need to minimize downtime. And, you know, the, the um, number of hotspots that are offline for uh, the rack units is just not up to uh, what I can probably say has been a great experience. Um, that being said, I don't have any experience with the OGs, the OG Helium Miners, the Panther X, Synchro Bits, or Mile Sites. Um, Linksdot has just produced very few units. Uh, nobody really looks like they've been able to get a handle with them. Um, let's see if we can sort here. Uh, yeah, so it looks like Calchips, which are the, the Rack Miners, um, got quite a few, about 13,000, 12 to 13,000 that are offline right now. Um, and then another six here, which is an improvement over the past few days. Um, so I think maybe, maybe their, um, the SD cards have, have been, you know, cleared and back up now. So, uh, maybe those are doing a little bit better. Uh, with all of these, I definitely do recommend you hardwire in with Ethernet. 
it's worth buying the 50, 100, 300 foot cable, whatever you need, plug it in with Ethernet. I, I personally don't even have all my fleet uh, plugged in with Ethernet, but those are the things that I need to optimize. And before you even get your first one, you need to know, do whatever it takes to get this thing plugged in via Ethernet and just kind of eliminate some of these other you know, network issues, uh, internet connectivity is a big part of, uh, you know, why people think they have a, a worse hotspot, just eliminate that altogether. Go ahead and plug it in via Ethernet. So that'll do it for today, y'all. Uh, those are my rankings uh, for February 2022. Again, if I get some other uh, you know, behavior that I'm seeing, I'll try and give you guys an update on, uh, you know, the rankings as we go. But so far, SenseCap and Bobcat, I mean, they're the top two, no doubt. And then everybody else is kind of just trying to see who can, who can keep up because, um, and, and that's why those are so hard to find, the Sense Caps and the Bobcats. So, just my two cents, not financial advice, but just wanted to share my experience with y'all. All right. Uh, if any of this was helpful, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Uh, if not, leave me a comment. Uh, which ones did I miss? Which ones do you think should be on my top minors? And yeah, let me know what you guys think.